Check this out. German study shows added CO2 has led to 14% more vegetation over the past 100 years. That's right. The earth is becoming more vegetated. <laughs> and as I say it, I realize how true that statement is as far as vegetation and human population. <laughs> it's kind of sad, actually. Um, but check this out. Uh, yeah. Almost everyone in even just a fraction of science education knows CO2 is fertilizer to vegetation and that the added 100 or so ppm in our atmosphere over the past uh, decades have been beneficial to plant growth and thus led to more greening of the continents. Yet some alarmists still sniff at this fact or deny it. It's more than 7% more trees also. In the 34th climate video, Die Kult San here reports on a recent German study by Merbach el, uh, et al. that looks at the question of just how beneficial the added CO2 has been to plant growth globally. This author's findings, over the past 100 years, there's been an increased global vegetation growth. The global vegetation cover increased approximately 11 to 14 percent, of which 70 percent can be attributed to the increase of CO2 in the atmosphere. Huh reports uh, the findings there. Uh, another report, since 1982, the inv inventory of trees has increased more than 7%. Crop yields will rise by 15% by 2050. The news gets even better. The scientists show food production is expected to surge due to the increased amounts of CO2. Is this, would you, were you expecting this? I, d I highly doubt I wasn't expecting this when I was reading this. As the diagram shows above, crops such as soybeans, wheat, rice, and corn will surge as CO2 concentrations rise to 550 ppm in 2050, thus lending a huge hand in feeding the plants, uh, planet's growing populations, which could reach 10 billion by mid-century. I'm pretty sure we're going to reach 10 billion before the mid-century. I, I just, I think so. Another example cited in uh, is Germany from 1990 to 2015. In Germany, crop yields for wheat, barley, corn, and potatoes rose more than 30%, which the researchers attribute to, in part to the higher CO2 concentrations. The authors hope that the CO2-related crop yield increase will secure the food and uh, feedstuffs production and contribute to feeding the world's growing population. The study appeared in the Journal of Land Management, food and environment at the end of 2020. I mean, what do you guys think? Is this actually going to make a big difference? I have someone just posted this in my uh, locals, and I appreciate this because it's very interesting. It's not just fuel. $7 corn is sending meat prices soaring. The price of corn is, is soaring? Wait, but they just said that it's surging because of CO2. And now wait, it's affecting the price of meat wait what's going on here two of the biggest global meat suppliers jbs and tyson announced this week that consumer prices would rise due to soaring grain costs and unfavorable market conditions the consumer price index shows meat prices up two percent already in april which is are expected to increase as a rise plays out across the meat industry hmm. we have a sharp increase in, in costs uh, this is JBS ASA CEO Gilberto Tamazoni said on Thursday, grain costs are a structural condition that will stay here for a while. We will adapt our pricing and work on efficiencies to mitigate this cost increase. And of course, they're targeting corn. It's kind of interesting because, uh, you know, it's this whole thing with it is corn going up in price or is will it boom or you know, it's it's almost, you know what it reminds me of? Seeing the news say eggs are bad for diabetes and eggs help you prevent diabetes. Like the same news, like four months, six months apart, whatever. And it's like they're changing their minds back and forth. You're reading different things. You know, they're trying to push eating bugs down our throats. I'm not, I'm not joking. This is from Bloomberg. The EU approved sale of mealworm for human consumption. I did an article about the crickets, the 17, or not, excuse me, not crickets, the cicadas, 
that are coming out this year, the 17 year cicadas. I haven't seen them yet. I'm actually kind of shocked because it's really starting to warm up and the, the, the forest around me is really green. And I would have expected to see cicadas popping out. And I haven't seen them yet. But they were talking about how you can eat them. You should cook them. You should fry them. You can batter them. You can cover them in chocolate. Like all sorts of different ways. But they're pushing insects. It, you know, so we're, what I'm noticing is the world is changing, right? The, the globe is changing. So one thing that I've seen now is this whole push that we're ruining the, the oxygen on this planet. Then I found this. Oxygen's or Earth's oxygen rich atmosphere will last only another billion years. Only. Only another billion years. So fear monger away, everybody, because it we got another billion years of oxygen. Wait, hold on. Let's let's get into this. Life is thriving on planet Earth thanks to oxygen. <laughs> they, oh, cool. Oxygen is a highly reactive element. It can form compounds that are nearly that with nearly every other element on the periodic table, releasing energy in the process. In a process known as cellular respiration, organisms use oxygen to oxidize substrates, for example, sugars and fats, and generate energy. The Earth formed approximately 4.6 billion years ago. Intense volcanic activity released gases that formed a toxic atmosphere likely a mixture of carbon dioxide, methane, ammonia, and water vapor. Traces found in ancient rocks suggested uh, that the 2.7 billion to 2.8 billion uh, years ago for the first time oxygen released into Earth's atmosphere, forming new minerals like iron oxide. Scientists think that early photosynth photosynthesis, excuse me, photosynthetic microorganisms able to use sunlight to chemically break down carbon dioxide molecules into carbon and oxygen, cause the amount of carbon dioxide to decrease and oxygen to increase. But only around 4.5 billion to 1.5 billion years ago, oxygen was becoming a significant compound of Earth's atmosphere. Today, Earth's atmosphere contains 78% nitrogen and roughly 21% oxygen. Scientists all agree that life cannot go on forever on planet Earth, as the aging sun grows hotter, oceans on Earth will evaporate and the atmosphere will escape into space. Eventually, the sun will run out of energy and destroy itself together with the inner planets, including Earth. Wait a minute. There's, so they're saying the sun's getting hotter and maybe that's causing a, a rise of temperatures? I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. I mean, this is Forbes. I'm just reading Forbes, right? A pair of researchers in Toho University and NASA Nexus for Exoplanet System Science has found evidence via simulation that Earth will lose its oxygen-rich atmosphere in approximately 1 billion years. Their paper published in the journal Nature Geoscience, Kazumi Azaki and Christopher Reinhard describe the factors that went into their simulation and what it showed. Well, it, it's quite long and I think we get the point we got a billion years of oxygen left okay earth is heating up it's going to create more co2 which the plants love and thrive which break down and release oxygen trees algae well the ocean is is a huge part of how we have oxygen isn't it and <laughs> people are saying the sun is racist <laughs> oh you guys are hilarious i mean do when do we send out an SOS beacon into space? Save us! We only have a billion more years. Oh no! More plants are growing because of the increase of CO2. Oh my gosh, what to believe in anymore, right? 